This is going to be the most boring test of a Jaguar I-Pace ever. In this video, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance, I'm swapping the Deu Matiz for a Jaguar I-Pace so I can drive to Scotland for dinner. So here we are, I've come to SNG Barrett in Bridge North uh, where I'm going to swap my Deu Matiz for a Jaguar I-Pace. So let's start with a look around the I-Pace. I mean, for my money, this is easily the most attractive car the Jaguar makes. Um, I think it's just absolutely fantastic. I love the cab forward design. I love the fact that um, that's the fresh air scoop um, right there. Um, it's a lovely, lovely shape. Um, so yeah, well done to Ian Callum and his team for making something that is different, but not ridiculously so. There's too many electric cars that look a bit ridiculous. It's kind of why I like the Tesla. The Tesla does not look ridiculous. It looks like a fairly normal car, really. So that's all the good. I will say the slight disappointment is there is no rear wiper. And look, it's a really dusty rear screen because it's so dry. This is what happens in the UK when it doesn't rain, everything gets dirty. But um, yeah, what a fantastic looking car. And um, obviously it, it's not very hubner inside. There are buttons and menus and displays and all sorts all over the place. But there we go, 90%. There's a claimed range on the I-Pace of 292 miles. But um, yeah, I suspected that was rubbish. 184 miles um, sounds more realistic. That should get us to where I'm stopping tonight. I'm stopping in Cumbria again tonight. Not in the Lake District, the other side of the M6 this time. And look, we've got a little um, S&G Barrett air freshener, just to remind us of Jaguar's heritage. So um, yeah, I look forward to generally being baffled by the technology, but um, the seats certainly look comfortable. It'll be interesting to discover if they actually are. And it is claimed to be a full five-seater, so there is room of plenty in the rear too. If, if I give you the um, leg warning, there is plenty of leg room here and look we've got a little 5 volt and 12 volt power outlets we've got handy little pockets we've got a glass roof um, so I get to appreciate the outdoors um, without getting wet if it rains um, I mean the seats are quite firm but I don't think they're uncomfortable oh look, there we go obligatory drink holder little cubbies yeah it's all right really but I mean yeah typical rear view but um, thankfully there is a reversing camera and you definitely need it. Of course there is a frunk as well. Aha! That's where charge cables are located. Um, so um, if I can only find a 13 amp plug I can still charge up. Although um, with a 90 kilowatt hour battery it's not going to charge quickly is it on um, a 13 amp supply. Um, probably take two or three days. Uh, nonetheless, there's some nice engineering going on here. This feels a bit cheap. Look how it's scratching the paint already. Mm. The boot is certainly a decent size. What's under here? Oh, more handy extra storage, variously. Uh, the obligatory um, tyre gel but will be no help at all. A towing strap, which we hopefully won't need. There we go. And um, yeah, does, does this... Oh, I don't need to lift it. It apparently does it itself. There we are then. Right, I'm gonna park up Myrtle and we better get driving. Right, before we even depart, my first challenge is gonna to be to try and make the sat nav work Navigation, there we go. Hello, Julian. I'm not Julian, but never mind. Oh, the, the car wants to connect to my phone. Okay. Right, um, is, is this what testing a car is like these days? Um, I just want to go somewhere, actually. Ooh, okay, charging is needed. It says it's 185 miles. We haven't got that much charge, um, but that's why I'm setting off early. Here we are, we're good to go. So, um, foot is on the brake. Need to start the car. There we go. Need to put it in drive. And 
I need to let the car creep away. I also need to wash the windscreen because that's filthy. Ooh, that's clever. Washer's built into the blades. No triangle of doom. And I've got a head up display, um, which you probably can't see from there. Um, so it's telling me where to go. That's quite handy. Some strong regen going on there as well. So this is the Jaguar I-Pace. Um, the starting price for these is about 65 grand. So you're thinking, well, this isn't very Hubnut. And you're right, but um, I started Hubnut because I wanted a channel. Actually, no, I just wanted to record my exploits. The first time I ever drove an electric car, it was a Nissan Leaf. If you go back and watch the video, it's hilariously clunky. Uh, but we all have to start somewhere. And um, yeah, because I am very, very interested in electric cars. I mean, if you follow the channel, you'll know that I'm not really interested in modern cars. And that's because I think modern cars are just unnecessarily complicated versions of cars from 20 years ago. Um, oh, it's a 40 limit, is it? Okay, car reckons 40. Um, so I just get a bit disappointed. I expect more and electric cars are frankly where I think modern cars should be. Um, it's very interesting technology. I, I love driving them. They're so peaceful, so smooth. I love the instant torque, which we'll have a play with in a bit. Not too much of a play. We've got miles to cover. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I find them deeply interesting. And you know, I've, I've, I've driven converted classics and they have their place, but none of the converted classics I've ever driven are actually practical as a daily transport for um, living anywhere other than the centre of London, really. Um, whereas an electric car like this, you can cover distance in it and you can rapid charge. Um, you should be able to rapid charge this and effectively put 168 miles of range in, in one hour. It is this way, isn't it, car? Yeah. Oh, I've got maps all over the place. I'm not even sure where to look yet. But uh, now it is a 30 limit, so we'll, you know, um, we'll, we'll drive at 30. It feels like we're barely moving, doesn't it? But I see national speed limit, and um, frankly, I'm not here to um, just not have any fun at all. So let's see what she'll do. Ready? Jeepers! That, um, yeah. 60 comes up quick! <laughs> Crikey! And uh, it's, it's dual motor, so four-wheel drive, so um, yeah. That, that, that was a bit more of a kick than I was expecting, which is silly really, because I've driven this car before. Only very briefly, but um, Julian Barrett did let me have a quick spin around the block in it. Um, I think possibly the last time I came to visit. And uh, I asked then, can I borrow it for a longer journey? And he said, absolutely. Yeah, so the regen is set to um, very strong. So as soon as I'm lifting off the throttle, um, we're going into charge. So um, I quite like that. Other people don't like that so much, but it means I'm not having to touch the brake pedal, really. I mean, let's be honest, that level of performance is just silly. Um, kind of beyond silly, really. Uh, I think the 0 to 60 time is four and a half seconds. And it's something like 596, or maybe it was even 696 um, Newton meters of torque. It is a lot of torque. It is exactly what an Invercar does not have. And I bet you no one has um, compared a Jaguar I-Pace to an Invercar before. The ride's a little on the firm side, I must admit. Um, maybe that's because I put the suspension in low mode. You can adjust the ride height, apparently. I, I don't know what sort of settings are available, but maybe that's a nice sporty setting. So it's done 1,891 miles, and I know it hasn't really been that far yet. I don't think it's ever been attached to a rapid charger before. I have an app on my mobile phone, so that's slowing down just using the regen. Um, it's the Ecotricity Electric Highway app. Uh, which should make it easy to pick up charge at the motorway services. Um, but
but um, yeah, I mean, really, I have no idea how this journey is going to pan out, and it's going to be fun finding out. So this isn't going to be your usual eye pace test. Most people are not wearing brown corduroy shorts and showing off their horrible knees in quite the same way that I am. Um, this is more about exploring electric cars in general, uh, what I love about them and what I dislike and whether long journeys are now feasible. I mean, to be honest, it looks like a genuine 200 miles of range if it was fully charged. And that's what my 2CV does. The 2CV has 200 mile range. I can fill it up a lot more quickly, that's true. But um, it's proof that that sort of range is getting very practical. I mean, I wouldn't want to be doing 200 miles every day in this car, I don't think. But um, yeah, we shall see how the day unfolds. I wonder if there's some lumber adjustments somewhere. Feels like there should be. Hmm. Yeah, maybe not. I'll keep playing around with that on the on the, the trip. I'll have plenty of time for playing with seat settings and all this technology. I have no idea how any of this works. It's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and everything. It has everything. And I don't know how any of it works. Oh, that is really strong regen. Yeah, I'm having to moderate the regen with my um, with my um, throttle foot. That's all on the pedal. There we go. Are we going to come to a complete stop? Not quite. I'm quite nervous, uh, but um, here we go. Yeah, that's um, extraordinary acceleration. I couldn't even look at the speedo to tell you when I hit 60 there, but it um, didn't take long. Right, common sense, common sense, common sense. Oh, I love electric motors. Oh, this, this adaptive cruise control is something I could definitely get used to. Um, it's um, great. When people slow down in front of you, the car just slows down. Um, I think we need some more pace. Can we do more pace? Okay, stop, stop with the accelerating now. Hmm. <laughs> I think I accidentally managed to set the cruise control to about 100 then. Well, I'll tell you what, I must be the only person who's enjoying this 50 mile an hour section of motorway because it's doing wonders for my range. We now have 143 miles of range left and 138 miles to cover. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Motorway Roadworks. Said no one ever until now. Well, we're up to 10 miles difference now. 126 miles of range, 116 miles to go and um, I've decided to throw caution to the wind. We have set the cruise to 70 miles an hour and um, the um, coefficient of drag on this car is 0 0.29, um, which is um, pretty decent for a big slab of car like this, I think. And um, yeah, the stereo is okay. Could do with a subwoofer, if I'm being entirely honest. Uh, the low down bass is, um, yeah, a little bit lacking, I would say. I wasn't enjoying raging at the machine quite as much as I thought I possibly could. Not enjoying the motorways all that much either. There's some too many people who aren't paying any blooming attention at all. Um, I mean, if you see a car indicating, it's an indication that that car would like to come across. So the worst possible thing you can do is just continue ambling along in your little bubble, completely getting in the way. But hey, at least I'm not a professional driver, so I don't have to do this every day. Still haven't touched the pedals for gold knows how long. Uh, quite a lot of miles, probably about 60 miles now. Um, it's just like being in Took. No, 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 it really isn't. Right, we've just arrived at Charnock Richards Services. Um, I'd better try and work out how you charge this thing. Um, we don't need charge, it's got 86 miles of range. So we covered, we've covered about 100, 105 miles, um, and we still got loads of miles left. So, but I'm going to chuck some in anyway. So, um, let's do that. 
Well, that wasn't too strenuous. Um, you can see the, um, or you could see if it could focus. But uh, yeah, it's charging at 392 volts, 87 amps. And um, we shall leave that going and go and get a drink and perhaps a bite to eat. Um, but yeah, it uses the CCS um, charge method. So um, yeah, we'll just leave that going. Have a break. Ah, there we go, 28 minutes. And it's up to 63%. And that'll do. To terminate this session, please refer to your app. Okay, right. I'm in my phone for appage. This is all new technology. Oh wow, it's cost five pounds already. So five pounds, it's delivered 17.8 kilowatts of energy. And I've just had the charger stop. So that's good. So the question is, how far can I drive on that 17.8 kilowatts? Okay, we need the car to disengage. Interesting, why won't that release? Well, that, that, that was a bit strange. Um, I had to lock the car and unlock the car and then it unlocked the charger. So that's a peculiarity. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I'm not sure why when the car was unlocked, the charger wasn't unlocked, but nonetheless, um, we managed to get there in the end. Um, how strange. I should point out, that of course, the main difference between this and the last time I drove an electric car, um, the last one, well, the last proper factory made um, electric car was a Nissan Leaf that we took up to um, Yorkshire and drove there about. And that time, the Ecotricity chargers were free vend. Um, you had to use a separate Ecotricity card, but um, you could fill it with electricity at absolutely zero cost, um, which um, was quite attractive, I thought. Yeah, I mean, obviously I've had to pay now and um, I'm going to have to do some number crunching, which is never my strong point, to try and work out whether it's good value and how it compares with petrol. I know in terms of EVs, the I-PACE is not very well regarded in terms of economy. Um, but then I don't think the Teslas are either. Um, they're very much performance cars. And just like you wouldn't expect a performance car to sort of sip um, petrol. Um, these things don't sip electricity either. Ah, here we go, uh, coming off the uh, motorway. Which is good, because I've covered, um, uh, how many miles have I covered? About 140 miles so far, I think. I don't really feel like I've driven this car, um, because it's mostly been driving itself. Uh, not that it does that, it hasn't got anything that claims to be autopilot, but in terms of speed control, and you know, I've mostly been on motorway, so I've got no feeling for the handling. I, I can't get used to the brakes, mostly because I keep forgetting that it decelerates so strongly when you release the throttle. I haven't yet tuned in to the one pedal drive technique. It's very quiet when you stop. Oh, better national speed limit. It is genuinely quite scary how quickly this car will accelerate. Oof. Might have been a bump stop or two. That's just slowing down on the regen. And uh, yeah, we're, we're into the bend and watching out for a Land Rover. Oof. Doesn't do crests very well, does it? Which is unfortunate given the state of this road. Electric cars are still a frustrating business. I decided to come out because I'm down to 17% um, um, battery remaining. I've managed to burn off another five getting here to this charge station in Appleby. Or Appleby Manor where there is a polar charger. Um, I'll show it you. 
course, a modern car is parked in front of it because idiot. Um, but um, yeah, the post doesn't seem to be working. So um, my app is just doing that continuously and not giving me any electricity at all. There's also a connection fee. Um, and um, yeah, you, you better not charge for more than an hour or they charge you a tenner. Um, but yeah, that's not working. And it's annoying because look we're there it's initializing it knows it's connected it wants to take the electricity but it is not working so um yeah polar network not looking very good at the moment and i can't access a rapid charger unless i go onto the motorway which i don't really want to do no, I'm sorry, Polar Network, if your chargers aren't going to work and your call centres are experiencing high volumes of calls, um, which is usually the cry of a company that doesn't want to pay enough stuff to actually answer the phones, um, that's the end of that. Um, I'm going to have to go to the motorway services to charge up, which is not going to be as scenic. I was hoping to have an explore around here. And, um, yeah, it proves that in so many ways the um, network for electric cars is still unusable. Well, I was starting to get a bit of range anxiety there. As you can see, not very much left in the battery. So, um, uh, yeah, I guess I'm stuck at T-Bay services, but at least it's a nice grassy sort of a service, services. So we'll go get a cup of tea. Yeah, that was down to 8%, which is quite low. Uh, so it's charging at 90 amps, 385 volts. Um, gonna be at least 45 minutes, I would have thought. So we're gonna have a very lengthy cup of tea. Oh dear, I'm up to six quid already. Uh, it's put almost 20 kilowatt hours in. And the bad news is, that's still only 31%. Um, and um, charging voltage, it's at 402 volts and 86 amps now. 86 amps going through that wire. And I can touch it and not die. I mean, that's quite remarkable. But um, I guess I shall avail myself of the dog walk. Um, to stretch my legs because um, otherwise I'm just going to sit in the um, eye pace and um, catch up with YouTube comments. Hmm. After 46 minutes, it's only charged up to 40%. And um, if I want full charge, um, I'm going to have to wait another hour and a half. Uh, that's quite alarming. I guess this is the problem. You can have your massive battery, but um, yeah, it, it's not gonna, um, well, the, the bigger the battery, the longer the charge time. Um, 45 minutes in a Nissan Leaf would take it from pretty much flat to pretty much full. Um, so um, that's a little distressing. I was hoping for far better than that. So I guess I'm stuck here for a bit longer. I've got the windows open for ventilation because this glass roof um, really doesn't help with the whole heat thing. It's not really what you want in an electric car. Um, so I'll just catch up with the old emails because I'm speaking to you on the trusty Oppo. Um, plenty of comments because the Pete C. Cortina video has just gone live today. So um, let's see where we're at. we are with that. 220 comments. Oh, right. Admin time. Well, for some reason, the app timed out after 48 minutes. And, um, oh. Now, um, we've got another warning. Let's go and find out what's going on. Oh, that's good. It's saying charger error. That's really helpful. I'm going to see if I can set it off again. I can't use the second charger because that's not got a CCS. Oh, electric cars, they're the future. What a palaver. Um, it wouldn't restart the charge. So, um, taken quite a long time to try and suss out what's wrong but I had to basically start it up start it and then turn it off again and then it would um, take a charge so um, yeah this has taken a very long time to achieve not very much um, I'm trying to remember what time it was when I rolled in here but it was about an hour ago I think oh it must be longer than an hour it must be up to about an hour and a quarter and I've still only got 44% charge so um, Rubbish is the word. Rubbish. Very frustrating. I'm absolutely 
losing the will to live here. I've caught up with all my comments, near enough. Getting a bigger, bigger and bigger problem trying to keep up with comments. Um, but um, we're at 125 miles now of range, 62%. Still an hour and 10 minutes to go if I wanted it full. Uh, which I don't. Uh, I think I'm going to say that's enough. Uh, that'll get us a good bit of the way down the road, or up the road rather, to Glasgow. Glasgow is still 132 miles away, so I'll definitely have to stop again tomorrow. But again, um, I think um, little and often is going to be the way to do this, and I'll try not to run the battery so low. Well, here we go, we're running out of M6. Uh, we are perilously close to Gretna. We are um, approaching Scotland. So this will be the first time I've driven an electric car from England to Scotland. Um, quite a moment, really. It has to be said, the way this car eats miles up is um, phenomenal. So, hello Scotland, we are in you. Let's talk a bit more about the um, I-Pace itself. Um, yeah, I'm really liking it. I mean, this is, the suspension is firmer than I would like, and I suspect the huge wheels are part of the problem there. Um, to someone who's obviously had a fair bit of experience with Classic Jaguars, um, being the former editor of Classic Jaguar magazine, uh, I know just how well you can combine ride and handling. and. Um, Frankly, an XJ Series 1, 2, 3, or even an XJ40. Um, yeah, they're astonishing um, how they are so comfortable and yet handle so well. This handles well, but the, the ride comfort just isn't there. Now we've all overtaken the truck and now the cars have slowed down to the same speed as the truck. What the heck is that all about? But even though I was doing 70 on the motorway, I still seem to be averaging 38 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which seems quite good. There was some bloke on Twitter reckoning his Tesla does 19 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but that frankly sounds implausible. Um, I don't wish to dispute facts found on the internet, but you know, Teslas are still a big lump of car. I can't believe the Jaguar is that bad, but maybe it is. I've never driven a Tesla over this sort of distance. Here we go. The overflow car park. I like how they've designed it so you have to do this palaver to actually get near them. But uh, we have reached the Insta Vault. And we'll take that out. That's, that's what converts this plug from normal charging to um, your rapid. Your rapid is through those two at the bottom. Um, I think it's going to be this one, therefore. Is that a CCS? That is a CCS. There we go, that goes in there. Connect plug to car. 35p per hour. Contactless card. Available tap card to start. Ready, press start. There we go. Tap card to end. Okay, so I've got to keep my card handy. Um, which is good because I've managed to put it down and lose it already. That's clever. Oh, there we go. Right, keep my card in my wallet. There we go. So we arrived with a battery at what, 12% was it? And uh, it's going to take two hours to charge it up to maximum. But um, it's really struggling to focus on that for some reason. There we go. So um, yeah, I think I might park up and go for a walk. So Jaguar claim that the I-Pace can charge at 168 miles an hour. But the problem is that's using a 100 kilowatt uh, charger and there aren't any of those in the UK. Um, I'm not sure what rate the Tesla superchargers charge at, but um, you can't use those with a Jaguar. They're Tesla only. And um, yeah, so 
in theory I should easily be able to put a useful amount of electricity in that car very quickly but the, the infrastructure is just not there and uh, it is somewhat unsettling that here we are so many years on the infrastructure doesn't seem to have gained any real improvement um, we're being encouraged to go green and drive electric cars which has massive benefits for cities uh, get all the vehicles with fumes pumping out the exhaust they're just sitting there and pottering about if they were all electric cities would be a lot more pleasant but the odd thing is that electric cars make such lovely distance vehicles um, uh, oh this is a lovely little path I'm walking down at the moment um, so yeah they're great for distance because they're quiet and peaceful and smooth and it seems a waste to confine them just to cities but at the moment that is sadly very much the case but the Instavolt charger I'm using now I know, happen to know there are lots of them in Glasgow yeah this has been a very pleasant meander um, here at the council headquarters how's that for an imposing building and look at the pink Astra Mark IV that has faded beautifully but not the bumpers excellent right um, I'm going to go and find a tea shop and then walk back to the car and see what juice is going in it oh things are improving very nice Mark III Capri six valve apparently Nice RS alloys. Beautiful. Um, we've found a town centre. It's all very quiet. It's like the entire town has gone on holiday for Easter. Well, that was um, successful. Look, sometimes it's sunny. Uh, an art centre, a nice little cafe, very reasonably priced tea. So it certainly pays to go for a walk uh, rather than three quid. It's just a pound. So that's good. We're going to see what else we can find in Dumfries. Well, it wouldn't really be um, Scotland without Rabbi Burns, would it? Um, for a tribute to him there. It's a fantastic church here. It's absolutely marvellous. But um, yeah, lots of lovely old buildings and uh, little passageways and roads you want to go and explore. Like, um, like that one down there. Oh, let's go and explore. Well, I wanted to find something impressive, but all I've found is a yellow LDV Maxus. So, um, yeah, not, not quite so folksy once you start heading down the um, side roads, necessarily. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm going to say that's concluding that. We should get back to the car and see if it's got some electricity in it. Yeah, how are we doing? Oh, wow. Uh, it's up to 96%. That was unexpected. I must have been walking for longer than I thought. Uh, it's been about two hours, I think. Uh, so that's great. Um, I'm just going to open the car up because... Um, makes sense to um, let it cool down through natural methods and then um, I'll stop the charge that's interesting I was just doing some route finding and um, we appear to have lost three miles of range just sitting there with it running effectively uh, I've got all the windows down at the moment to try and cool it down without battering range on the air conditioning It's actually not a bad way to appreciate the um, serenity of electric travel. Normally you'd open the windows and hear an engine. Ooh, aha! Because the battery is so full now, the regen is um, much less powerful. I forgot that. Actually, there is one problem with these seats. Same as many modern cars, the head restraint doesn't let me push my head back in the slightest. In fact, yeah, I end up hunching away from the head restraint. Um, I, I presume it's to do with um, crash worthiness because obviously the closer your head is to the head restraint, the less chance there is of whiplash. But yeah, like so many modern cars, it just leaves me feeling hunched. And I quite like to just stretch my neck back when I'm on a long journey, just so you're not constantly in the same position. And I can't actually do that because there's a really great head restraint in the way. I have to kind of lean forward and do that, that's not the same at all. Right, here we are, another Instavolt. So I'll turn off and um, chuck some more juice in while I go and get some lunch. And handily there's a Tesco Express down there, there's a Waitrose if I feel really fancy. Mm. As a bit of a Brucey bonus, we're playing Jumpstart the Olympian. 
it hasn't run for several months. Uh, readers may know we've done a few videos on this one before. It is um, officially Hubner approved. It is a triaxle ex Hong Kong Leyland Olympian. And um, we're just using this um, bus over here to um, fling some electricity at it. We did consider trying to use the Jaguar I Pace as a jump pack, but um, we thought we'd probably break something and cause a fire, so maybe not. Yep, so that's the oil pressure coming up. Good old crowbar as um, a <laughs> contact jumper. Brilliant. So yeah, the battery is living that tray all the way down the front. Right. Jobs are good. Flag ahoy. What a mighty noise! So, oh, that's free now. That was a bit sticky. Uh, check the throttle for stickiness. Yeah, that's sticky. I'd say. Right, just trundle about the yard with no throttle then. We just need to dowse it off. Excellent, that's all good fun. Right, so. So we won't be doing any throttle then? Nah, just trundle over in D. I think it might have gone into gear. So yeah, just straighten out and put the, the nose of the bus up to the big garage door. Yep. And just flatten the Clio. Uh, I don't think Malky would be too appreciative if you flattened his car. Oh, we won't do that then. Not very fast on Tickover, is it? So uh, nose it over towards the back of the Cleo first and then swing it in so that it goes straight. Okay. How are we doing? Keep going. Straighten her up. Oh, <laughs> there's the brakes. That'll do it. Grand! Now we can wash it and I can operate the wipers. Yeah, okay. For a double decker, you need a very big lance and all very long arms. How did I get involved with this? Uh, it's very difficult to do one-handed, and I've been told um, don't get the traffic film remover on your skin because it burns. So it's clearly good stuff. It's Where is the switch? It's not the toilet master, is it? No, is that not. actually recording? Yes, it is. Oh, good. It's not the toilet master. It's not the side light, it's not the head. Is it down here? There's washers. Is it that one? Oh! Oh, look at that. Out of sync wiper joy. Are you going to get upset if I leave the part like that? Yes. Oh. Oh, first ball. Excellent. Brilliant. Pantograph wipers. Right, so we've done playing with buses and uh, it's a meetup for the um, Scottish section of a certain slightly sweary forum. And they've got chargers. So um, these are Engini. And um, yeah, I'm at 56% at the moment. Um, it's not a very quick charger by the look of it. Maybe it's going to get faster. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll come back in a bit and see how it's getting on. But 0.3 kilowatt hours is not a great charge rate given it's meant to be a 50 kilowatt hour charger 0.5 oh well maybe it's better than nothing and um, yeah we'll go and see what's turning up at the meeting because the meeting is in full effect
behold the majesty. Um, you might recognize a certain Suzuki Bellino uh, GSR from a, a previous video. That's here, there's a very nice 405. So we'll go and have a look. We're having to move the Suzuki because it's too bland. And um, because there is more majestic Volvo-ness. Look at that. Patinated beyond belief. And missing headlamp wipers loses marks for that. Uh, this Volvo has headlamp wipers. This one has headlamp wipers. Hey, that's good. Uh, there's a Subaru and look at this. 405, what a colour. That is very nice. Oh, I should stay this side because I think this side has got the centre caps on. Yeah, there we go. Stay that side. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. See if I actually put that on properly. Mmm, smoking open. hot. It's fine. Well, I think this must have sped up. Um, the display shows nothing useful at all. Um, but it now reckons an hour and 21 minutes and it'll be full. Um, it's quite expensive here, 36p a kilowatt hour. But that's only a penny per kilowatt hour more than I was paying anyway. And I haven't got to stop because the car's here and I'm stopped anyway. So um, yeah, the, the machine itself is um, saying nothing even slightly useful, which is um, quite irritating. I don't know if pressing start does anything. No. Don't give me any information at all. That's quite annoying. Well, welcome to um, day three. I'm in sunny um, Glasgow. It really is sunny. And um, yeah, uh, my challenge is I'm going to try and get home on one charge. And I want to see if I can get to Skelmersdale, um, which is 206 miles away, with 179 miles of range. Now, I reckon I can do it. So, um, we'll see if I can. Uh, I've moved the camera position as well, because I want to try and give you a better view as we're driving along. So, we'll see how well this works. Well, that was a bit of a disaster. Um, got a bit hoodwinked by the road layout. And uh, um, accidentally added five miles to my journey. I can't really afford um, wrong turns. And, unfortunately, I made one. So... Um, yeah, that's um, very, very irritating. Mm, sadly, I fear my experiment is doomed to failure. Uh, we're going up a hill and that's battering my range, even though I've dropped my speed to the speed of the lorry in front and I'm trying to pick up a bit of a slipstream off it. It's not the best shaped truck for getting a slipstream off, to be honest. I've picked a slightly better truck to try and follow as we're um, on this um, little barren section of the M74. Uh, I've also changed my destination. I've come a bit further north to Preston and um, it's still not looking good. Still 145 miles, but I've only got 133 miles of range despite my emergency slipstreaming measures. Uh, we're still on the adaptive cruise control at the moment so, um, in theory, if the truck should suddenly brake, the Jaguar will brake as well, and it will respond much more quickly than I can. Still, following this close is a little unsettling, to be honest. Well, we're down to a four mile difference between um, distance to cover and distance to go. 129 miles to cover, 125 miles of range. So, as unsettling as the slipstreaming is, and I certainly would not do this if the vehicle wasn't capable of um, stopping for me, um, it does seem to be working. Well, we're in good shape at the moment, I think. We're 110 miles to go, but 114 miles of range. Um, as we're in good shape, um, I've dropped the adaptive cruise back from the truck in front, make life feel a bit more relaxing. Uh, we're now on about a two um, maybe even a three second gap um, from the truck in front. So we're still getting some slipstream effect, but not as good as if we were right behind it. But the um, average fuel consumption is going down. Um, 
currently, I think I reset it on in Cumbria on the way up, and it's currently 37.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Sorry, 100 miles. Now we've got some miles to spare. I've sped up a bit and found a faster lorry. And this one's very tall and very low to the ground, so an even better slipstream, I should think. Uh, we're still hanging a, a safer distance off the back of it, mind you. Yeah, I got bored. Um, we've got miles in hand, so we're now doing 70, or an indicated 70, probably more like 68, or thereabouts. But we still have 12 miles in hand at the moment, I think. Oh no, no, we're down to eight. Um, maybe I won't be doing 70 for all that long, but it's nice to have a blast and some free air and no trucks. My truck buddy pulled off, so um, that was kind of my cue to get a bit of a shift on. Well, this is Shap Summit. We're um, a thousand feet up, and uh, I might explain why my range has plummeted. Um, we've still got 57 miles left, but the range has dropped to 56. So I'm hoping we get some miles back on the other side, otherwise we're going to be in a spot of bother. We're quite close to T-Bay services, um, but I really don't want to stop there because I think that's too far away from Bridge North. I don't think it'll allow me to achieve my dream of a one-stop drive from Glasgow to Bridge North. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to see how this pans out. No, it's no good. My bladder has range anxiety. Um, also got some serious range anxiety going on with the car itself. Um, we're still 43 miles away from where I was planning to charge with only 42 miles of range and we're going up another hill. So um, I don't think I'm going to make it to my second um, preferred charger. So um, I guess we're on to plan C, which is see if we can find some electricity here. So there we go, we're down to 20%, 41 miles at um, 11.59. Um, so I might as well stop for lunch as well. Well, how ecotricity? Uh, the pump is claiming it is in use when clearly it is not in use. And I've tried phoning up and uh, there's no reply. So um, I'm going to have to push on. Hopeless. Well, unfortunately, it's back to the extreme slipstreaming. Uh, 38 miles to go. Sorry, no. 38 miles of range, 40 miles still to go. So I'm going to stick to the back of this Dutch wagon and um, oh, the speed limit's coming down to 50 as well, that'll help. Well, there's good news. Um, we are 18 miles to go, 23 miles in the tank. Uh, I've managed to upgrade to a different truck, so we're now doing an indicated 60, but it was a bit hairy back there. So at the moment, um, six miles of range, 1.5 miles to go. So um, yeah, cutting it fine isn't really the word. Just a bit irritating really, but I have managed to get to Preston from Stirling on one charge, um, which is a fair old distance, so um, it's not all bad. But yeah, I'm um, not trying to win any traffic light Grand Prix, it's just um, keep uh, cruising along nice and gentle. Well, here we are then, allegedly it is at this petrol station. Yes. So, um, first visit to a petrol station in my electric car. Well, it's going to take a couple of hours by the look of it, so um, I'll better go and have a bit of an explore. Just back at the car, just walked off, found a little cafe, had a very pleasant lunch. Uh, let's just see what we've got on the meter when it actually wakes up and tells me. Oh. Range 11 miles, charge at 4%. That's not right. Has my day just gone from fail to fail? Charger error. Oh, we better stop that then. That's a bit disappointing. <laughs> oh, well, that's quite disheartening. Um, I'm now going to be stuck here for at least an hour. I need the battery at, at least 50% before I can go anywhere. Um, very disappointing. Um, also disappointing is the attitude of some people towards electric cars. I mean, 
Some people get very offended by them and some of the comments have been frankly ludicrous as if I've said, right, everyone's going to have to give up their petrol cars and drive electric cars from tomorrow. That's it. There, there is no um, future for petrol. I haven't said that at all. I haven't made any environmental claims. I haven't said this is even great and far more convenient than petrol or diesel. It isn't. I'm not an EV evangelist, but I just like electric traction. I love the feeling, I love the peace and quiet and serenity. Um, I, yeah, it's all about giving me something I don't get from my old cars and electric cars do that. Whereas modern cars, I, I just find the benefits are, um, yeah, just not there. But um, yeah, we shall sit here and see how long it takes to um, charge this thing up. Bah! It hasn't gone up much yet. Oh dear. I could really do with at least 150 miles of range um, just to make sure I can make it back to Bridge North. Oh, so what's making life interesting is um, that's my current arrival time at S&G Barrett who own this car. Um, I've got to be back there before six before um, everyone goes home because I need to get the Matiz back and leave this there. Um, but um, I need 122 miles of range and I'm currently at 63 miles of range. So that's gone up by 60 since I got back from my lunch. Um, so I'm going to give it another half an hour and hopefully that'll be enough. But I was meant to be con collecting some Dayu bits on the way home. Uh, my mate has broken a Matiz and a, some lamps and various things, but I think I'm going to have to delay that for another time. Oh, lovely. Maybe I'll turn the um, car off again. Well, we're up to 98 miles uh, of the 127 we need. Um, that's all right. As long as that ETA stays before six o'clock, we're okay. And look, we're just hit 99 miles. Uh, my friend Michael has just pointed out that there is a, an app available for your old Jaguar I-Pace. And if I'd had that, it would have alerted me that something had gone wrong with the charging. I would have been able to monitor it via my smartphone. But I don't have that app because, frankly, it's not my car and I'm not going to bother downloading too much stuff for it. Well, that was a bit annoying. I had the ignition on because I was playing with features while I'm sitting here waiting, bored out of my brain. And um, before I called the garage, um, my local garage is doing some MOT work on the Rover um, while I'm away. And um, before I called for an update, halfway for that call, the car just decided to turn off its ignition. So there went my hands-free phone call. Um, yeah, a bit irritating. Why can't it go, oh, there's a phone call in progress. I really shouldn't turn off now. 125 miles of range, 122 miles to go. Stop saying power cut detected. We know that happened earlier. Um, I think I'm going to say that's good to go. We're 53% on the battery. Um, should get there for half five. Um, that'll do. Um, just going to clip you up there. Will I go and disconnect? Ooh. Uh, I've discovered how to turn the subwoofer up. Well, hello there. Um, we are now munching along the um, M6. Um, I'm not sure quite what happened. We seem to jump down in mileage um, quite a lot. I don't know if it's planned a slightly different route, but we have 63 miles to cover and 80 miles of charge. So um, it's all looking quite comfortable. Ah, um, the sat nav seems to have changed its mind again. It was saying we were going to come off at Stoke, but now it's decided to go further down the M6, which is fine, but we're back to only three miles, that, that's free just in case you were unaware, um, of spare range. Um, hmm. So I might need to slow down again. Yep, that's pretty wet. If I see blue sky, we'll be all right. At this point, I made a grave error and um, managed to seem to fail to record that grave error. Um, I came off at Stoke, ignoring the sat-nav, which wanted me to carry on because I didn't have enough miles. Um, but then I ended up on the M6 northbound by mistake. So I was now going the wrong way on the motorway, munching miles and um, everything had fallen completely apart. Um, I decided that I would have to try an ecotricity charger and pulled into the services where, um, yeah, this happened. Well, there's a surprise. It doesn't bloody work. Um, ecotricity strike again. The most useless charging network in the world. I mean, seriously, guys, this is pretty poor. 
Um, that's the second one I've tried today. Second one, it won't work. The chap on the phone says he can't do anything because this machine has lost its contact to base. So once again, here I am, 21% battery, no way of charging it. Hopeless, time to get the InstaVolt app back up again. Well, here I am in crew. I had no desire to be in crew, but it's where I've ended up because there's an InstaVolt. Incidentally, the wire is it a stupid place for an eye pace. I just about get it in reverse right up to the posts. I had to stretch the cable from the other side of the unit. Now, it might stretch around the front of the car if I part the other way, but it's not very easy to use. But anyway, that's charging. Um, I need the toilet, so I'm going to go and visit Morrison's. I might grab some food. I need to get out of the rain. It's all gone very wrong. And um, yeah, proof it. If you want a nice, easy journey, do not do it in an electric car. Get one with an engine, like that noisy Nissan. That's the car all the way over there. Oh, good grief. There better not be a power cut. We can conclude that the EV experience is not very satisfactory. Uh, absolutely soaked. Fortunately, the thunderstorm didn't seem to take the power out, so that was good. I had a deeply unsatisfactory dinner at um, Morrison's. And uh, now I just want to escape. Get back to Bridge North, get back to the Matiz, and um, head back to Wales. And um, then another few years, I'll have another go at driving an electric car and see if the world has improved any. I've just noticed that uh, the um, average consumption has dropped to 36.1. I should have looked earlier, because I bet that had dropped to um, in the 35s. Um, I suspect that um, average will have gone back up again. Uh, by the time we get to bridge enough because um, yeah I keep on hitting national speed limit signs and doing this <laughs> yeah that, that kick just doesn't really wear off I've never driven um, a petrol engine car that does that and even ones that are powerful they don't have that constant kick but it just feels like it's getting quicker and quicker oh electric motors whoa What I will say is um, it's now 10 hours since I climbed into this car this morning and um, I've still got this slight issue with the head restraint being too far forward but I'm really really comfortable actually I don't feel like I've spent 10 hours driving a car um, so it is clearly comfortable despite the slightly jiggly ride at times um, it is um, yeah a lovely place to sit and we've made it back to SNG Barrett um, Slightly lost track of miles, but yeah, I think we're over 800 for that trip, which wasn't quite what I was expecting. I was expecting about 600, but yeah, got lost, did some faffing about. There you go. Um, so this fantastic car, absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, very thankful to S&G Barrett for letting me um, have a drive about in it, a considerable drive, and, and um, one which really gives you a good impression of what the car is like. Sadly, it also reveals what the infrastructure is like, and that's terrible which is a shame because, um, yeah, all cars should be that much fun. Anyway, um, shush, that, that's been the uh, Jaguar I-Pace on Hobnut, an unexpected test, but yeah, maybe not an unexpected conclusion. But I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. Don't forget we'll be back to old bangers soon, and I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. Back in a banger! Yee oh, home at last. 91,000 miles on the clock for Myrtle, and uh, there's Foxhound. And it's just starting to rain. Marvellous. That's been a long day, Glasgow to home, in two very different cars.